Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in The Future of Theology, Essays to Honor Jürgen Moltmann, edited by Wolf, and uh, published by Erdmans in 1996. We're going to conclude the first third of the book. first third of the book deals with challenges. And we're going to wrap up by looking at uh, pages 52 to 73, the authors of uh, essays of Ritchell and Yadder, and take a look at the new in theology and what is the new in theology. But it will wrap up, it will conclude um, the first third of the book, the first third of the essays. And then there's a Two more areas, perspectives, and themes that will follow. Let's take a look at this uh, concluding lesson for the first third of the book on challenges. Let's begin with block one. We read that uh, Ritchell asked the question, are Moltmann's works truly new with regard to progress? Historically, theology has been contradictory concerning Christology. Theology has emerged under the weight of national constriction and Protestant blinders. So, uh, Richel asks, are there any genuine innovations in systematic theology? Systematic theology abbreviates constructive theology and descriptive theology only constructive theology can exhibit progress. But he says most, he's critical, he says most theology today merely reorders ideas already existing. Students are not learning how to think theologically. So if take a look at uh, three, block one, note three, the notion of progress and the constriction of theology creates a demand to think theologically for oneself, to form something constructively new. Theology must become Wissenschaft science. It should employ scientific method. Theology as Wissenschaft. How are we to interpret the world within the God perspective? completing that which has gone on before, becoming concrete in the churches of the Reformation and the postmodern denominations. Examples of new innovations, new initiatives in theology are Irenaeus and his concept of salvation, Athanasius and his concept of Trinity, and Augustine and his concept of grace. So today, theology has a need for new initiatives. Moltmann introduced eschatology as a new development in the doctrine of the Trinity. The postmodern era has introduced a theology of language as a novelty. How does any new initiative affect the church's confession of faith? So block one, note six, we look at theology and the confession of faith. Today, theological truth is perceived as linguistic expression. The doctrine of the Trinity is such an expression that influences the church's thinking and doxology. The truth of the Trinity is freed into language under this new emphasis in linguistics. So Ritchell says that theology has been freed into language in the postmodern era. era. But does the, does the truth then become linguistically imprisoned? <clears throat> it only becomes linguistically imprisoned if it is imprisoned as rigid dogma. We must differentiate between Doxological language and explicative language, theology as explicative language, will inform doxology. 
Theology must loosen rigid dogma that have imprisoned concepts. Then it becomes therapeutic theology, bringing forth the flash of something new. Theology must liberate concepts from linguistic prisons. That means we come up with a brand new paradigm. We need a paradigm change in theology, from traditionalism to postmodern paradigm. And that postmodern paradigm must be theoretical and practical, scientific and pastoral, a monothematic theology in the scientific area, and a praxis specific theology in the pastoral area. So, Ritchell says, the new needs to become a new thematic theology. A truly new thematic theology needs to emerge. Moltmann is such an example. Moltmann's emphasis on an eschatological and ontological trinity and the notion of promise and hope truly a new monothematic theology. But he did also require that it become concrete, so therefore he did offer the pastoral as well. He did include praxis very much with his theoretical notion of an eschatological theology. So this leads us to block two and the forming of a newly composed chain of theological concepts, the scientific side, that uh, becomes the foundation out of which we form our practical praxis. So let's take a look at this block two, the scientific side of the new in theology that must emerge and that has emerged with Moltmann. New philosophy brings new forms for theology. Aristotle informed Theology of the Middle Ages. New linguistic conditions were created. Moltmann was informed by the philosophy of Bloch and Hegel. And the postmodern theology has been informed by analytical philosophy. So this provides form. So we look at theology in the new form of analytical philosophy. Philosophy becomes a filter or a prism through which the self examines scripture and the historical situation. This hermeneutic filter breaks open rigid dogma in the process, creating new theoretical discovery and new praxis relation. That's key right there. We posit we form and we posit a theology through a hermeneutic filter, through a hermeneutic filter which is informed by a philosophical form. So, block two, note three, subjective philosophical form and objective posited filter equals praxis discovery in return moment. We discover and shape the real into a sign model picture this praxis is then applied to the old text in the return moment where we re-examine scripture out of that which we learn through the action and reflection of praxis. Remember, praxis is action and reflection in a particular historical situation. Praxis is action and reflection in a particular historical situation. So, block two, note four, praxis hermeneutic is applied to scripture for new constructive theology, a construction secured through the ontological trinity with regard to Moltmann. That becomes the filter, the posited filter through which praxis proceeds, reaching cognitive gains in theological interpretation. The new equals cognitive gains in theological interpretation. Now, Richard wants to look at theology as cognitive gains. And he says, Moltmann's book, The Spirit of Life, 
is the best contribution to the new in theology from Moltmann. The spirit is known as broad space, objectively, and flooding light, subjectively, within which the self acquires its identity. We get a very excellent contribution from Ritchell here on just how philosophy, philosophy provides the form through which the theologian can posit a filter or a prism through which praxis, action, and reflection will proceed in praxis ministry. Now we transition to Yadr. In block 2, note 6, Yadr on another millennium. Moltmann posits the centrality of the Christian peace witness, in other words, the centrality of Irene, healing of fragmentation, with a vision toward radical reformation. The covenant meaning of history is part of the promise to Abraham and to all believers, delivering us from the fate of contingency, sovereignty of covenant meaning, sovereignty of the ontological and incarnate trinity delivers us and liberates us from the fate of contingency. So Yadr tells us theology as defines theology as the covenant meaning of history. But our Western Constantinian story has taught us to identify sociopolitical flourishing with validation. We discern meaning where there is success, where there is continuity. The world has become one because of the global market and technology in our postmodern world. So, Yadr says there's a need for theological flourishing in this postmodern technological world. We must posit the peace of God's city, Irene, healing of fragmentation, by participating in the divine humanizing work, reforming the faith community's self-definition of healing fragmentation, subjectively and objectively, reaching the goal of Irene peace. Now from there, I want to take a look at uh, block three, which will conclude Yadr and the essay by Yadr. So in block three, we're going to look at Moltmann's eschatological Trinitarian form which was supported by the philosophy of Bloch and Hegel. And a praxis chain of concepts will lead to the return moment of self-definition. Under the theoretical form, we must form the theoretical faith community through the world-making creativity of the gospel witness, which will take up the task of linguistic criticism. There you go. We will employ the new form that has emerged in postmodern theology. We take up a task of linguistic criticism, and that applies to Moltmann's theology as well. But Moltmann said that the theoretical must become concrete. He was very much praxis oriented, therefore, block three, note two. Practical praxis content. We take up the verbal charismata, the church's inner theoretical life must mirror the macrocosm of God's objective unification of the world, the healing of fragmentation. Subjective reconciliation is the counterpart to God's objective irene, healing of fragmentation. So we've combined the final two essays in part one on challenges. This does conclude challenges, but we did so and uh, realized that uh, both essays conclude that linguistic philosophy has emerged as that which uh, provides a form 
for postmodern theology as a new postmodern form, a new postmodern form that replaces the traditionalism. And that postmodern form is additionally qualified in Moltmann's case by the form provided from Bloch and Hegel, which led Moltmann to posit an eschatological, ontological understanding of Trinity. The God who goes out of himself in the Christ and the Christ who delivers the spirit that works through creation to Egyro, raise it up into reunion with the Father. It's an ontological trinity from Moltmann, but Moltmann was very praxis-oriented, and we know that he definitely demanded that the theoretical must become concrete. So we get excellent material here from Ritchell and Yatter on what is the new in theology. And basically, we understand that philosophy provides a theoretical form within which to shape the scientific side the and then the pastoral side of the new in theology evolves through a praxis that uses that form as a filter, as a prism, through which to go out of the self in practical praxis ministry. That's going to wrap up uh, pages 52 to 73. That will conclude the first third of the book on challenges. And uh, we will begin next time. I'll tell you what. What we'll do first, we'll do a little summary composite look at the first third of the book in our next lesson. And then after that composite summary, then we will move on to the second third or the uh, perspectives part of the book.